Okay, this tutorial is on using WordPress.com and playing with different themes. And this particular tutorial is very specific to the theme called Apostrophe 2. And in the previous tutorial, I showed you how to install that. Here I am looking at my current instructional design page as I've set it up so far. Now you may have a favorite theme that you have already played with. If that's the case, when we get into changing the themes, please take note of it so that you can revert back to that if you want to uh, use that particular theme for your midterm um, assessment. In my particular case, um, I've um, set up three different pieces for my menu. One is my course home, and this is my content area here. Here is my link to my MSET portfolio. And here is my post page. And um, hopefully all of you have followed that particular set of directions. Now, the bigger issue, of course, is that we want to apply a new theme to this, and we want to play with that theme. In the previous video, I had shown you how to install Apostrophe 2, but let's go ahead and do a super quick re, uh, refresh here. I've gone under Themes, and I have um, gone under Free, and I have found Apostrophe, and I've clicked on my little ellipse, and right now I've actually already installed it, and that's the theme I'm running currently. So if you have not installed it, you would have the option to activate that theme at that point. And across the top here, I can see that it is the current theme is apostrophe two, and that's the one I want to play with. So now I want to go ahead and customize it. Please note that there is a big difference between over on the personalized side, clicking on themes versus click clicking on customize. So now that we are into the customize area, I want to go through these options super quick. This is my site uh, title. This is my tagline. And I can um, also display a site icon. The site icon really doesn't do a lot for you visually on the page. It just simply um, adds a little teeny tiny icon up here. And in general, I, I, I don't expect you to do that. It's a really teeny tiny little icon that would allow your end user to visually see that, oh yeah, that's my site. Um, if I super quick um, come over here, we can see that, for example, under Amazon, I see a little teeny tiny site icon that has the little Amazon logo. I have uh, another little icon here for CVS. Again, these little teeny tiny site icons are generated by that option um, here that I could select a uh, site icon if I wanted to. Um, colors and backgrounds. Let's talk about colors and backgrounds here. Um, I can select an image for my background. Um, I'm going to go ahead and select an image. And this is truly up to you as to whether or not you want to uh, create an image. Um, I could have selected it from my media library as well. Um, I'm going to super quick go out to Google, grab an image, um, and let me, um, for the sample of this, take this particular image. I'm going to go back a step here, and I'm just going to right click and save image as. And I'm going to throw that onto my um, desktop over here. And I'm going to give that a, a name of background one. I'm going to click on save. Then I'm going to come back into my WordPress. And I'm going to go to upload files. And I am going to find my desktop once more. And I'm going to find that newly updated file. I'm going to click on open. And there it goes. I'm going to click on select. And I'm going to click on save and publish. And I want to take a look at um, what that has done for me. So I'm going to reload my uh, page here. And now you can see that I've got a background image that I had previously just added, okay? I could also um, 
take a look at palettes here in terms of a variety of different palettes. I'm going to actually switch over to something radically different green. I can see that my um, hyperlink up here is turned green. I'm going to save and publish that. I'm going to reload my page. And here I can see that my colors have changed um, to that new palette. Now, the reason I take the time to point all of this out is that for your instructional design midpoint assessment, you do need to play with colors. And I'm showing you here that you can play with your backgrounds and your colors to make um, a um, particular choice. And I apologize, the little window just popped up on my screen that has nothing to do with you guys. Okay, so now I'm again under the apostrophe to um, theme and I wanna play with fonts. Um, certainly in the um, commercial um, version of WordPress that you host on your own site, you can do a variety of different fonts by installing themes. However, here um, you can basically do very similar kinds of things. You've already gone through a tutorial on your headings. And here in terms of your base font, this is basically um, your font for your paragraphs. So if you wanted to install a new font, for your paragraph, take a look here. I've got a serifed font. And actually, let me just zoom in so you can see that. If you take a look here, you can see that I've got a serifed font. It's got these little teeny tiny embellishments at the end of each of the little letter characters um, there. For my heading here, I've got a sans serif font. So I'm going to zoom back out again. We're going to try to come up with a decent uh, combination here. And I can tell by looking at these that these are a mixture of serif and sans serif fonts. I'm going to go ahead and choose a sans serif and notice immediately that this has now changed to a sans serif font. It doesn't have the little embellishments at the size of, excuse me, at the ends of each of the, um, um, letters. Let me show you a, a different uh, option here. For example, if I go with Meriwether and I can tell that that is a serif font. So watch what happens in terms of my basic text over here. Indeed, it has changed to a um, serif font. If I go to the sans serif version, it has changed to a sans serif. I'm going to um, also note that I can choose whether I'm going to go with a base font of large or small, um, those kinds of things. Don't be fooled by my screenshots in terms of being um, zoomed in. Small truly is small. Um, so I'm going to go to normal and there it is. So you can play with your base font here. And of course, in terms of, I'm going to go ahead and save and publish that here. Um, I'm going to pause this video and come back in a moment. Okay, I am continuing um, my instruction in terms of fonts. Previously, I was under fonts, and I've been playing with the default font, etc. And I've shown you that you can go ahead and um, change it to a serif or a sans serif font. I quickly ran out and did the HTML 7.1 exercise, and I'm going to click onto that now so you can see. And the reason why I wanted to show that to you is because over here under headings, you also have the option to choose uh, to change all of your headings. Now, unfortunately, you cannot change headings um, per heading, meaning that you cannot select a different font for the H1s or the H2s or the H3s, but at least it gives you some variation and um, can be kind of fun. So go ahead and um, make sure that you've gone ahead and added some type of font piece here um, in terms of your um, HTML um, tags. And that's what that looks like. You can also see that the whole site is being governed by some H1 or H3 tags, et cetera, whatever's running up here, because now your entire site has taken on that new font. I'm going to continue with some of the other options here under header image. Um, header image would throw something up here in terms of the top area. And the thing you want to pay attention to when you're playing with your header images 
is you want to make sure that whatever you choose in terms of a header image, your background image, and your color combination all works together. And so there's where you're going to apply a little bit of your knowledge in terms of color theory and um, making sure that your color schemes work together, number one. And number two, making sure that the readability is still intact. So for example, this green color is probably not my best choice against this particular background. So for that, I'd probably either have to change my background image um, or I'd have to go back and change um, my color schemes over here under colors and backgrounds. Okay, so I could certainly change different palettes. I'm going to save and publish that. All that's going to do is give me a different uh, combination of colors in here for my hyperlinks, etc. Um, and I can also select, obviously I've already done that. I've selected an image. Let me go ahead and reload that. Here's that image as the background for that color palette. Um, etc. So I'm going to go back and I want to um, just go over this whole idea of content op options. All of this applies exclusively to your posts. So if you had uh, these particular posts displayed in a different way, so for example, the da display date, you can turn that on and off. If you had categories, you could turn that on and off. If you had tags, if you had um, author information, you can go ahead and um, manipulate that type of thing. That's all this content option area does. Now, the next thing I want to talk about are widgets under this particular piece. And in terms of the primary widget area, most themes will have primary, sometimes secondary, sometimes footer, sometimes tertiary. You really have to play with the, the widgets in order to know where they're going to land on your page. I'm going to go ahead and play with adding a widget to the primary area. And in order to add an widget, widget, excuse me, I'm going to click on add widget and I can add almost any widget that I want here. I'm going to play with calendar here and I'm going to give it a calendar uh, title here and I can play with its um, visibility. Um, I'm going to click on save and publish. Now over here I've got my site loaded as a preview and so now I can see okay well my calendar is coming up on my main web page and this reddish color is being driven by those colors back in this area over here. Um, and for grins, let me go ahead and take a look at what it looks like under my post page. And there's my widget for my post page. And I can um, go ahead and come back into my primary widget. If I don't like that widget, I can click on remove. Note that you're not deleting the ability to add a widget. You are just simply removing it from your particular um, uh, site. Um, you can do Google Translate, you can do a Gravatar, you could do an image, you can link to your milestone. I haven't played with this one myself. Um, let's do, um, for example, New Year's Day, and I'm going to do um, January 1, 2018. And I'm going to save and publish and I'm going to go ahead and go ahead and take a look at what that looks like. I'm going to reload this and here is my uh, new widget for my countdown date. So in terms of your midpoint assessment, if you choose to use the theme called apostrophe, you will have the ability to add the widgets, add the fonts, add the color scheme and um, certainly add the menu pieces. So for your exercise in this particular piece, you are going to have done a pre-change um, piece. You're going to play around with the menu apostrophe too. You're going to apply some of these different pieces, and then you're going to do an after shot 
of that and um, send me the link for your newly um, designed content area. Next, we will be playing with an alternate theme. And so I'll see you in a moment.